What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode four of the EKD show. I am back from vacation better than ever, and we'll get into that later in the show in our little Q&A. But this show is going to be all NBA, guys, all NBA. We are going to talk about each and every single series that is going on right now, and of course, with a little bit of a betting perspective. But we're going to start out West in the series that it feels like everybody is talking about. The Kings go up two games on the Golden State Warriors. And get this, guys. Teams that go down 2-0 in a best-of-seven series go on to win the series just 8% of the time. Just 8. Now, I was expecting the Kings to at least get one win at home, but the fact they're up 2-0 on the Golden State Warriors, I do kind of feel like it's just a little bit of a panic mode for the Golden State Warriors. We know they're much better at home. And look, the proximity, it's not that far. I know we've talked about that as well, that narrative. But really, I I think the Kings might be able to get the win in this series. And if I was going to bet into this, the one thing I want to mention is you can bet into a couple different markets on Caesar Sportsbook. The first one you can do is the correct number of games that the series will go. So if you'd like this to go seven games, it's currently a plus 130. I would look into that. But since I like the Kings and uh, the Kings to win it all, the series to go seven games, you can combine that and you can get that at plus 330. But everyone's also talking about the drama between Draymond Green and DeMontis Sabonis. I mean, at this point, when you look back at the video, Draymond Green, it's not looking good for him. It really was a dirty, dirty thing to step on someone's chest, although he's saying he's just not limber and making up some some type of excuse. Either way, it felt like both of them were in the wrong. Draymond Green was a little bit worse and obviously stepping on his chest to the point where DeMontis Sabonis went and got x-rays. His sternum was clear. The ribs were clear. But it got to that point. Now, we know Draymond Green can be a little bit dirty. He's got a rep. But obviously, Sabonis was just really taunting him, grabbing his leg. He wasn't just, you know, clean in this whole altercation. He grabbed his leg first. Obviously, Green then did that. But all around, the Golden State Warriors, they cannot have a situation in which Draymond Green is not playing. We're going to figure out if he's suspended for the next game. I know we're keeping a tight eye on that. At the time of this filming, we're not really sure what's going to happen with that. But nonetheless, Draymond Green, you need to stay on the court. You need to not step on anybody's chest, okay? But nonetheless, I think the Kings are going to win this series. I think they win it in seven games, but this is definitely the most entertaining series, I would say, so far in the first round. Staying out west, let's talk about the Clippers versus the Phoenix Suns. So we know the Clippers surprisingly won game one, 115 to 110. They're going to play their second game tonight. Now, I'm going to give you a pick for this game because I really do like this one. I'm taking the Suns in the first half, minus four and a half. The reason being, the Suns went down in the first quarter of that game. They were outscored 30 to 18. Then you see in the second quarter, they came out just firing away. They were really good in the second quarter. In the third quarter, they went on a 15 and 0 run. They were trying to come back and win this one, but it was really that first quarter in which they went down. That's not going to happen in this game. Monty Williams and company, they are going to be able to make adjustments and be able to beat this team. This is also on their home court. They don't want to go down too well on this team. The Clippers, look, I'll give it to you. Kawhi Leonard looked great in that game. I don't think that shooting performance is going to continue. Russell Westbrook couldn't score, but he was very impactful on the floor, as well as people off the bench really being impactful in that game. Everything kind of clicked for the Clippers. And I feel like you can kind of talk about, from a betting perspective, the zigzag theory, because it is surprising that the Suns lost that game, but now they're an eight and a half point favorite for game two. The Suns are going to win this game. I feel like the number's a little bit too high for me. So instead, I'm gonna take the Suns in the first half, minus four and a half. Kevin Durant's gonna be better in the first half of this game as well. So that's the way I would play game two. Now let's talk Lakers Grizzlies. We know the Lakers took game one, 128 to 112. And uh, Austin Reeves, apparently, um, he's him. He proclaimed himself as him. I mean, I just was dying laughing when I saw him do this because it was like a playoff game one. And yet he was great in that game. And that's good and dandy. And you beat the Memphis Grizzlies while John Morant went out with a wrist injury, which we'll get to in just a second. But um, him proclaiming himself as him was a little uh, little jarring for me, if you, to say the least. But nonetheless, there were a few injuries that happened during the game. Anthony Davis actually went down at one point, but he returned to the game. John Morant went out with a wrist injury. He got x-rays. He looks clear, but it's in jeopardy if he's going to play tomorrow's game. So really, I don't have a pick for what's going to happen in game two yet because I do want to see the status of John Morant. And then in terms of the series, the Lakers are the favorite at minus 310. I don't think you should bet that. And a lot of this really depends on if John Morant's going to be in this for the rest of the series. This really does come down to that. And sometimes 
a player like a John Morant, who's a star on the team, it's going to impact the odds. Right now, the Lakers are minus 310 for a reason, because that is going to factor in John Morant. But also at the same time, the Lakers have been a liability for Caesar Sportsbook the entire season. Before the season even started, they were already a liability. So some of that is factored in as well. For me personally, I'm not betting anything for the series. I would bet them game to game and really keep an eye on what's going to happen with John Morant. Time to head out east. The most entertaining series so far to me is the Knicks-Cavs. The Knicks took game one, but tonight the Cavs are a five and a half point favorite. If I'm playing this game, the way I'm doing it is the same game parlay. We're going to go to the Cavs to win and Donovan Mitchell over four and a half assists. Let me break it down for you. First of all, the fact that the Cleveland Cavaliers are laying five and a half points in general from the books, I think it's just completely disrespectful. The New York Knicks looked so good in game one, not to mention they've won four or five meetings, including the regular season, outright. This team is no joke. Julius Randle looked good in that first game. He's back from injury. Jalen Brunson was great. We know he was actually in foul trouble, three early fouls. So he didn't play that many minutes, and he was still so impactful, especially in that third and fourth quarter. So I don't think the Knicks are going to go down easy. In fact, I think the Cavs are just going to get the win. They're going to figure out a way to get the win tonight because you can't go down two games. It feels like a do-or-die type situation, especially at the beginning of a series. So I do think the Cavs are going to win, but we're going to pair it with Donovan Mitchell assists for the reason being Donovan Mitchell was great in game one. 38 points, 8 assists. But I will say... Some of the role players, some of the other starters, really need to pick it up. You cannot have an Evan Mobley going 4 for 13 from the field. Isaac Okoro, 17% shooting from the field. That's not going to cut it. Donovan Mitchell cannot win this entire thing on his own. I do think that some of the other players are going to step up a better shooting performance. Cavs get the win, and I do think he'll be facilitating the ball. We're going over four and a half assists as well. Now, again, this is one of the most entertaining ones in the East. In terms of series betting, I'm going game to game on this personally because I do think, I have a feeling the New York Knicks are going to win it. I think this can go the distance, six, seven games. But I I want to see how this second game shapes out first and then make a decision on how I'm going to bet this series. Staying out east, it's time to talk about the Heat and the Bucks. We know Miami got that game one win, 130-117. And those 130 points scored were a franchise postseason record for the Miami Heat. As for the Bucs, we know Giannis went down that second quarter. He has a bruise on his back. He should be playing the rest of the series, but we're going to have to keep an eye on that. But look, the thing that happened for the Miami Heat of why they were so good in this game is the fact that they jumped out on the Milwaukee Bucks, which was kind of surprising because the Bucs during the regular season, they're such a good first quarter team, such a good first half team. And then I get a little bit worried about the spread down the stretch. But nonetheless, Miami came out and they played a really, really solid game. Now, there's a couple factors that I need to mention, and this really comes down to three-point shooting. So Miami, they shot 60% from three, which is, by the way, that is the best three-point field goal percentage in a playoff game in franchise history. Then you got the Bucs, who are a good three-point shooting team. They went 11 for 45, 24% from three. That's the most missed threes in a playoff game in franchise history. This is not going to be sustainable. The Heat are not going to shoot that good from three, and the Bucs aren't going to be that bad from three. Plus, factor in Giannis, put him back in that game. The Bucs should be fine to win this series. So if you're looking at some of the prices available, right now I will say the Bucs minus one and a half games is at plus money, plus 130. I don't think that's a terrible bet. If Giannis comes back for the next game, which I expect, and I, I don't think it's going to be that bad. It's a bone bruise, but who am I? I'm not a doctor. I do think that the Bucs, regardless, are going to win this series. I think potentially they could win by one and a half games. So maybe getting that a plus 130 isn't a terrible bet. And then they're also still the Bucks minus 295 to win the series. That even without, um, even with, I should say, losing that game one. So those are all things to keep in mind. I would definitely keep an eye on Giannis. As I've mentioned before, the John Moran situation, when you have a player like that who's so impactful on the court, you just got to, you got to handle that situation first before you start betting into some of these futures. And now time to wrap up the rest of these series. These are games that I would bet, or I should say games within the series that I would bet game to game rather than looking at some of these series prices because it just is not bettable. So for example, the Boston Celtics versus Atlanta, they're playing tonight. The Celtics are minus 3,000 to win the series. You are not going to bet into that. So instead, I'm going to play a player prop tonight. I'm going Jalen Brown under 27 and a half points. Now, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, they really yo-yo, especially in the postseason. We've seen this during the regular season, but again, if you look back to last year during the postseason, I basically did this every other game. One of those guys is going to step up. Now, as for Jason Tatum, I do like 
His points prop at 31 and a half, but it just feels a little bit too high for me, especially if this becomes a blowout because they are double digit favorites in this spot. So I would rather look at a guy like Jalen Brown who had a double double last game. He ended with 29 points, but he did have six turnovers, which were really bad for the team. I think he won't be as impactful tonight in terms of scoring. I think Jason Tatum will kind of take a hold of that. So I'd rather go with him under 27 and a half points for this game. Also in the East, we got the 76ers up two games on the Brooklyn Nets, and you are not going to bet the 76ers to win the series at the prices currently available. They are minus 5,000 to win the series. Their minus one and a half games is minus 1250 right now, okay? You are not betting this. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the 76ers lost one game to the Brooklyn Nets. It just feels like a rite of passage as a Sixers fan to watch that happen. But regardless, this is one of those series that I would bet game to game. If you're looking at a big guy like Joel Embiid, I will mention he did go under his points prop in both games so far but did end with 19 rebounds last game but as for the Brooklyn Nets Mikhail Bridges actually looked really good uh, despite both of those losses looked a little promising but regardless the 76ers they've won the first two games and they've covered the spread in the first two games but do not bet into the series in terms of them winning because it, it, it is unbettable at minus 5,000 moving on the last series you got to talk about out west you got the Nuggets versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. And the Nuggets absolutely dominated this team in the first game, 109-80. to So this was the Timberwolves' second largest playoff loss in franchise history, not to mention the 80 points scored tied the fewest points by any team this season in both the regular season and the playoffs. So they barely put up any points in this team. And the Nuggets right now, they are minus 1,300 to win the series. The Nuggets are going to wrap this up. If you're going to bet into this one, just like, let's say, the Sixers and the Nets, maybe you pick the exact number of games that it's going to go or the correct score. You could absolutely bet into that, but obviously betting them to win the series, there's absolutely no value in doing that at this point. And now to the best thing that I've seen this week. I did get to pop my phone just a little bit while I was in Aruba. And then it has to be Russell Westbrook going back and forth with a fan after the game one win. He kept saying, watch your mouth. I mean... The funniest part about this video, one, you got the win, just exit. I, I, I'm sure the heckling gets really annoying, and I'm sure at some point I would be fired up, especially after you just played in a game and the intensity is really high. But I was more so laughing at this little kid, just in the middle of everything, <laughs> trying to bite into his food. It looks like he has a fork in his hand, so I don't know why he's eating this way. But to be caught on camera with almost 8 million views, I would be mortified as a kid. But nonetheless... Russell Westbrook, I mean, that guy is just always starting some type of drama, it feels like, on the court, off the court. Um, but that was one of the best things I would say that I've seen so far, because as you guys know, I'm here for all, all of the drama. All right, and now it is time for one of your guys' favorite parts, the Q&A. We're going to get right into it. Thank you guys so much for dropping some of these questions. Uh, I appreciate it. So the first one, what was the rose and thorn of your Aruba trip? Favorite and worst moments and events? So Aruba was beautiful. I would say the thorn was the fact that I was sick the entire time. One thing about me is that if I'm going on vacation, I am going to be sick. Um, I guess because my body is it's always in fight or flight. So as soon as I relax, my body's like, okay, we're going to get sick and deal with all the bad things that could potentially happen. So you don't have to deal with it at work. So I was sick, but I will say the rose had to be the food. The food was so good, so fresh. I'm huge with sushi. I was drinking things out of a pineapple. The fruit was unbelievable. Seafood was good. The meat was, the whole thing food wise was incredible. So that's really all I could ask for. But yes, being sick was definitely the thorn food was the rose. Hey, Aaron, if they gave you a million dollars to bet on, what would happen first? Jalen Hurts winning a Super Bowl or LeBron winning another championship? Who do you put your money on? It has to be Jalen Hurts. I mean, my guy, he got the bag. Absolutely got the bag. I'm so happy for him. I'm happy that he's going to be remaining with the Philadelphia Eagles. In terms of next season, I'm sure we'll make videos about that and how I expect that to happen. But I would bet more on Jalen Hurts than I would with LeBron. LeBron has a track history of success, and that's great, but I do feel like we're at the point, age-wise, it's just, it's just not going to happen. I feel like there's more upside right now, and a Jalen Hurts. All right, do you want to travel somewhere you haven't been? Yes, I was talking actually with my mom when we were on vacation that I want to go to Europe for two or three weeks and hit every country that I possibly can. I'd like to start in Ireland, go down the Amalfi Coast, move all around, end up in Australia. That'd be pretty awesome as well. Um, but again, I, every time I travel, I'm sick. It's a hassle. It's really hard with work. But at some point, I will get in a Europe trip and then, again, end in Australia because that's, that's, that's the goal. 
Um, if you could be the commissioner of a sports league, which one would you choose? I would choose the NBA and I wouldn't let any players rest. <laughs> and I don't know if that sounds brutal of me, but there would be no resting on back to backs. Uh, second of all, I would like there to be when you're sitting in your seat, like an iPad that flips up and you can live bet the whole game while you're sitting there and watching it live with player props. I feel like that would be awesome. Instead of having to walk all the way to kiosks, some places you can't even bet in arenas, so obviously you're doing it on your phone, but there's never any service, even when you connect to Wi-Fi. So I'd make it easier from a betting perspective. Um, and yeah, no players would be resting. <laughs> All right, last question. On all the ESPN shows you've been on, you've been awesome. Keep up the GOAT work, Aaron. Thank you very much. What's your favorite part about working as an ESPN sports betting analyst? My favorite part about it is the fact that I get to be opinionated and make these picks every day, which keeps me on my toes. It's new research every day. There's so many different things happening, so it keeps me on my toes, but it also gives me an opportunity to give my opinion on things. Obviously, I'm not given picks. I'm not told what to pick. Of course, sometimes I'm told, all right, we're going to talk about the biggest game on the board tonight because that goes without saying. But I really do love that I get to just have an opinion, come up with an opinion, and then put it out on national TV. It's still pretty crazy sometimes when I think about it that I do that. It's obviously much different than just being a team reporter and trying to figure out facts and information and just give it to the public. It's a totally different ballgame. So I really like it. It's not something that I studied, obviously, in college. I fell into this or stumbled into this, I should say, after college when I don't think universities are even allowed to talk about betting, to be honest, uh, in terms of undergrad things going on right now. But um, yes, I would say my favorite part is that I get to be opinionated. All right, guys, well, that's a wrap for episode four. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be back here next Tuesday to talk all things that are going on around all the multiple leagues. We'll most likely be all NBA next week as well. But thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll catch you back here next Tuesday. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.